guys, Adam from Eco Wise Italy here in my garden again, lying on the grass. It's kind of the end of the day. It was quite foggy this morning, and then the sun, dull, hazy sun, came out, and it's kind of, it's kind of a bit cold, but not that cold. It's a bit damp, but I'm feeling a bit cold, so I got my funny silly hat on and jacket on and stuff. But because we've been on lockdown, I've been exploring a bit in my garden and I've been looking for things that are alive because I kind of get excited by that. And often we think of biodiversity of all the different things that are alive on the planet, in the ocean, in the soil, in the sky, in the forests, in the mountains different kind of ecosystems and habitats that have all these different stuff that's alive and as you know we're losing a lot of it. it's disappearing you'll know that biodiversity loss the sixth extinction and somehow we're disassociated from that it doesn't really mean that much to us in some way so when I was in the garden to yesterday and I did this look. I knocked over this and then under here I saw these guys here right and I thought wow what are they and I picked one up like that and that's big beastie right? and I looked and I saw it had pro legs six pro legs and it biting jaw parts and a hard head and I realized that's probably a beetle larvae a baby beetle so the adult would look different and it does the adult will show you some images of it it's a long horn beetle so this is xylophytic so this the nymph stage or it's not actually a nymph but the, this larval stage it's xylophytic so it eats wood so that's why it's underneath this stump from a walnut tree not many things can eat wood this beastie here has got an alimentary canal a digestive system with all kinds of microbes in it that actually digest the lignin and the wood itself and get nutrients out of it but I started so I looked up these long horn beetles and there are more I mean I'll give you some numbers here because it's kind of interesting now, have you ever heard of one like I'm an ecologist and a biologist I've heard of them and I saw them but I only saw them when I first came to Italy I realized what they were and I'm not quite sure what this is because it's not the adult, I'm not an expert, and you've got to be an expert. But even the experts, they keep finding new ones. There was one found last year in Italy, a new species. But there, you know how many there are in Italy? They're about, I've got this paper in front of me because I can't remember numbers very well. But there are 250 species of longhorn beetles, this group of coleoptera of beetles in Italy. Okay, so what's the big deal? But have you ever seen one before? because I've only ever seen them a few times. People that live around here and, and work with wood, they know exactly what they are. And they know what they grow into and they know what they do. And some of the times they're even a bit worried because these things eat into wood. Normally it's dead wood, but they can even eat into living trees. Some other species of this can become a pest. So when they're adults, they're about this long and they've got sweat bag antenna and they're really cool. And there's, like I said, there's so many different kinds of them. And you might think, well, why is that important? Well, this is the question. Why is it important? Well, here's some scenarios. Here's some stories that I'll make up. Just keeping in mind that probably you, none of you have ever seen this before. Some of you might have, but you probably don't know much about it. But it could actually be pivotal in your lives and my life and the whole world. We just don't know because that's what gets exciting about this stuff. For instance, these are a major part of the diet of woodpeckers. And woodpeckers, you know what they are, picchio. Birds that have incredibly strong beaks and reinforced skulls 
so they hammer against the wood and they can <laughs> and one of the reasons they're doing that is they're looking for things like this creatures that live underneath the bark or in the wood because that's a good meal I'll, I'll pick them up to show you just imagine that if you're a woodpecker that's that's breakfast lunch and dinner so that's kind of a good find so just imagine that in this area there were no longer trees because we cut all the trees down and did something else like made a shopping center here let's say good idea for some people perhaps but just listen to this as a, as a story cut the trees down so there's nowhere left for the adult beetles to lay their eggs so you wouldn't have these babies and if you didn't have these baby larvae then you wouldn't have some of the main food that woodpeckers need in the winter and if there were no woodpeckers because imagine if the woodpeckers didn't have much food then hopefully they can they can fly so they can go somewhere else not like some other animals that maybe are stuck there because they haven't got legs they haven't got wings or they're snails and they're slow and they can't just go somewhere else if their habitat's destroyed that's it but the adults of this you know or the woodpeckers let's say they fly away but when they fly away the bats that need the woodpeckers because the woodpeckers make holes in the trees because one of the other things they do is make holes as a nest site they're really cool beautiful very very symmetrical shape and different woodpeckers that are different size have different size holes and different kind of animals other things use those holes after the woodpecker's gone away like wasps like owls and like bats so just follow the story imagine if the woodpeckers went away because there weren't any of these because there weren't the trees because we cut the trees down so the bats that live here and need to hibernate and spend you know spend the winter and maybe even spend the night in holes and trees that woodpeckers have made there are no more woodpeckers and there's no more trees and there's no more of these then what happens to the bats well maybe they go somewhere else and what if the bats are carrying a virus because probably COVID-19 came from bats that moved from one place to another and had a virus and then were around people where normally it wasn't a problem but suddenly they were close to people as they went to look for somewhere else because their home had been destroyed so this gets important right another scenario what I'm talking about now is biodiversity and why it's important because the most obvious thing for why it's important is biodiversity is important because it provides us with everything we need on this planet to live like our food, our air, our clean water all the resources that aren't mineral but even some of those come from biodiversity if you think about it and fossil fuels and stuff but what other kind of reasons that it's important to have biodiversity and there's so much stuff that we don't even know what it is you've probably never heard of this but there are how many? 250 in Italy. there's 35,000 of this kind of longhorn beetles in the world 35,000 that's more than all the different species of birds in the world there's 18,000 species of birds in the world they think they don't know they keep finding new ones and what's more scary is we are losing lots and lots before sometimes we even know they exist what about mammals they think there are 6,495 mammals in the world so there are three 35,000 species of this thing that you probably didn't even know what it was right what am I trying to say I'm trying to say that there's lots and lots of exciting mysterious things in the world that we don't actually know about and we're losing it extremely fast and sometimes people describe that as being like losing a source of knowledge or a source of like I was saying before resources things you need but that's a really simplistic way of thinking about it it's called the utilitarian value it's like how you can use something like these things here okay these grubs here could be useful how well in many places in the world that would be good tucker that would be good food many many places it's very rich in in fats and proteins and you can imagine that would make good food and a lot of people over historical time in different places in the world would eat that now would you eat it would I eat it well I come from a society where you probably wouldn't eat that but think about what you eat for a moment maybe you eat cows many places in the world where people wouldn't eat cows they're sacred certainly wouldn't eat them 
maybe you eat pigs, but there's lots of places in the world, lots of peoples in the world that would not eat pig, because they think it's just like, oh, you wouldn't eat pig. So don't think you, some places in the world where, you know, they eat horse, where they eat dog. So let's not just say that you don't eat this. I personally want to eat it because I think it's a beautiful thing and I want to wait, let it grow into an adult and I appreciate it for the reason. So utilitarian value of what you can use it for. Or maybe you could use this for something else, you know. Maybe there's a substance in this. Or because it makes holes in this tree, then the tree... Those holes in the tree under the bark allow this fungus that's growing on here, you see there's this white fungus, to grow. And the fungus can't get a foothold on the tree unless it's been damaged. And these insects damage the tree, so the fungus grows there. Maybe this fungus has got a chemical in it. In 10 years, there'll be somebody, a woman researcher, someone who finds that this, there's a chemical in this that can be made into a drug that cures a certain disease that we really want to cure, right? So... Because of that bug, this fungus is here. There's these connections. I'm telling you stories about connections. What about this insect here? What about... So I've just done two stories, right? One about the virus. And one about a potential cure for cancer in this fungus. What about another story that's more interesting? What about... I sleep up here in my house. And these insects here at night have a certain especially when they're males courting the females they have a certain sound that's you can't actually hear it very well but when you're asleep the frequency absorbs into your subconscious and into your dream world and affects the way you sleep the frequency of sound from this insect what about it gives off a particular pheromone a particular chemical that goes into the air and attracts a let's say a insect that comes to um, mate with it right it gives off a you know the male comes it smells the smell so it comes but that particular chemical also helps one of the trees that's nearby here to flower because that's what it does we don't know but things are totally and utterly interconnected and interrelated and like I said before, one of the analogies is used is you know, losing a library. Because if you lost a library, imagine if there was a library somewhere, and there have been, like in Alexandria, for instance, there was one that was ransacked and destroyed by, I can't remember who it was, somebody, the Romans or the Greeks or the Phoenicians. Somebody came and burnt it because they didn't like that kind of information. They burnt it all. There have been lots of libraries that get lost, but you can imagine having a library full of all kinds of information, amazing stuff, stories and information and techniques and ideas about how to do things and ways of recording wisdom and information to pass on to future generations. And imagine if that library, nobody had even read the books and there were thousands, in fact millions of them, and it got burnt down. It's like, oh, we've lost something really important. But with biodiversity, it's so much bigger than that because it's not a library is something that humans have written and created, but biodiversity is something that exists and people didn't make it. We influence it and it makes us, and we make it and it makes us, but at the same time we didn't actually create it from nothing. It's created, well, let's not talk about that, but biodiversity, losing biodiversity is not like losing a library at all, really. It's more like losing another world, because there's so much going on and we have no idea what it is because we're not paying attention to where we are, right? So this little beast here, there are more of these, like I said, there are 250 in Italy. There's 35,000 in the world. And you probably, like me, didn't really know what it was. Long haul beetle. Look it up. Look how many there are. And then compare it to the number of other things in the world. And you see, you didn't even know this thing existed, but it lives near you. And you don't know how it influences you. You don't know how important it is to you now, has been to your being presence on the planet and your existence. And into the future we just don't know so this is just a silly set of stories about a little bug that I don't really know well but wow it could be really important so I'm not going to eat it absolutely not in fact what I'm going to do is I'm going to take care of it because I know that it's very deeply connected to me and those people I love and the world that I love and somehow makes me who I am and I've got a responsibility to take care of it, right? 